A Democratic lawmaker is sick and tired of Republicans blocking every single thing that actually might help working Americans. Uh, and decided yesterday to go on a pretty fiery rant uh, and called them out for not only blocking, but also taking a little jab at uh, Republican cancel culture. Take a look. Mr. Speaker, one of the earlier speakers said, this is the most dramatic change in labor law in 80 years. And I say, thank God. In the late 70s, a CEO made 35 times the worker. Today, it's three to 400 times the worker. And our friends on the other side running around with their hair on fire. Heaven forbid we pass something that's going to help the damn workers in the United States of America. Heaven forbid we tilt the balance that has been going in the wrong direction for 50 years. We talk about pensions, you complain. We talk about the minimum wage increase, you complain. We talk about giving them the right to organize, you complain. But if we were passing a tax cut here, you'd be all getting in line to vote yes for it. Now stop talking about Dr. Seuss and start working with us on behalf of the American workers. Damn, that's that's spicy. <laughs> I love it. Uh, wow, when, when when did he get so not boring? Love it. Uh, all right. So now uh, the context here is this is during a debate about the PRO Act. Uh, so what's the PRO Act? It's actually a, a pretty good piece of legislation. Uh, it stands for the Protecting the Right to Organize. Uh, so basically, it's a, it's a pro union bill. Uh, being who, somebody who is uh, very pro-labor myself uh, and who has uh, been part of a union, I, I love it. I absolutely do love it. Um, so let me give you some of the provisions that are in the PRO Act. Uh, so you all are familiar with uh, right to work, right? So this is this right to work uh, basically allows union like non-unionized freeloaders, right? Uh, and so used to be you didn't want to join a union in a union shop, well, you still ended up having to pay the dues because you still ended up getting the benefits of that union, even if you didn't actually want to be part of it. Uh, so right to work essentially got rid of that, uh, saying, oh, don't worry, you can still benefit from union contracts in a union workplace, but you don't have to pay for it. Essentially, freeloaders, okay? So uh, we should just rename right to work to right to freeload, essentially, because you are what you're doing is that you're profiting off the 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 work and, and and the money of the unions and they're you know fighting for you know benefits and, and better wages if you don't want to be part of the union then well then maybe you shouldn't get those uh get those pay raises maybe you shouldn't get the benefits of a union contract if you're not going to actually be part of the union but that's just me uh and so this bill what this does uh is that it would allow unions to override right to work laws Oh, that's good. Uh, now, it would also collect dues from those who opt out of joining the union in order to cover the cost of the collective bargaining and, and the administration of the contract. So then, uh, that is an incredibly good thing to hear. I like that. Um, that's, a, that's a good piece of legislation because I absolutely, absolutely despise, despise the freeloading and despise those right-to-work laws. Uh, and so now there's more. Uh, it would also end employee interference and influence in union elections. Uh, so now it also would end uh, and make illegal company sponsored meetings with mandatory attendance. So now the problem with that uh, is that they're often used to lobby against a union organization drive. Uh, so it would end that practice. Additionally, employees would be able to cast a ballot in union organizing elections at a location that is away from company property. So now you might think, okay, what, what's the issue there? Well, it would prevent intimidation by people from the company. So, all right, that's good. Now, the PRO Act would also allow newly certified unions to seek arbitration and mediation uh, to get an agreement on a first contract between labor and management. So oftentimes when there's a, a brand new union drive, you end up having uh, some difficulties being able to, to get the company to actually recognize that union once it's established. This would allow these newly certified unions, newly established unions, to get a first contract on the books. That's awesome. 
Uh, now, not only that, the law would have prevented an employer from using its employee's immigration status against them when determining the terms of their employment. So there's protections for uh, immigrant workers. Uh, it would also establish monetary penalties for companies and executives that would violate workers' rights. Corporate directors and other officers of the company could also be held liable. Uh, so now before I go on to that, I just want to thank uh, Kevin Logan, uh, KF Logan1875, for the uh, raiding party of 44. Welcome, raiders. I am talking about uh, union membership. Uh, we are talking about uh, the PRO Act, uh, which is very, very pro-labor. Uh, I love it. And, of course, Tim Ryan's uh, epic blow-up at Republicans. All right. So let's uh, move it here. Uh, so now... Again, this would help boost up uh, unions in this country, which unfortunately are incredibly small. Uh, in fact, only about 6.3% of private sector employees are currently in a union, and only about 34% of public sector employees are part of a union. Uh, so now, this is a direct reason why wages in this country are so low, why you have such high corporate profits, uh, and why you have such high income inequality and why a lot of jobs do not offer any sort of benefits. Uh, so it's also why direct action, such, a, uh, such as a general strike, has almost no chance of actually happening, being organized or executed. Now, I I've been in favor of doing general strikes, uh, of making sure that, you know, we have the ability to really uh, to, to use that direct action as a way to get Congress to pass our priorities. Generally, if you want something like that to happen, it's going to have to be organized at a very large level. And unions are, the, are pretty much the best way to be able to do that. Uh, without the unions, one of those things is very difficult uh, to, to be able to actually organize and execute. Uh, so we need, we need that union. We need that labor power together. So labor, of course, is, is massively underrepresented in this country. That's why we need a boost. Um, and by the way, to give an example of what unions actually do uh, for this, uh, you know, uh, for example, Denmark, okay? Denmark, Denmark has a minimum wage of about 22 to $23 an hour. They do not have a, a federally mandated minimum wage. Why? It's because labor makes it up about 70% of Danes uh, are in a labor union. Uh, and so basically they've been able to, as a result of that, set a de facto minimum wage of that much. That's pretty good. That, that is the power of the union. And by the way, that also helps them not have to rely on government politicians, for example, to set a minimum wage in their country. So, for example, here, the problem with the minimum wage is that it's still 725 after like at least a decade. And that's because we have to rely on millionaire congressmen to get off their butts and actually vote in favor of a minimum wage. And of course, with our system that is heavily, heavily corrupted by money and politics, by the Chamber of Commerce, this is why we do not get the votes to be able to pass a minimum wage. If we had labor power in this country that was equal to that of the Danes or better, well, then, and, and not just the Danes, but other countries that have larger labor sectors and labor unions then we would actually be able to have those benefits and be able to have higher pay, uh, sick leave, paid leave, things like that. All right. And so that's what we need in this country. Now, as a result, big corporations, big business and their lobbying groups are not in favor of this. They hate the PRO Act. They hate labor. Uh, and of course, these uh, groups end up paying these Republicans with the aforementioned uh, massive corruption. And that's why and that's why Republicans are, are massively against this. And that's why this, unfortunately, is going to end up dying in the Senate. So they're not going to budge on this. Right now, we've got a 50-50 Senate with people who generally caucus and vote with the Democrats. Uh, that's not always uh, the case. Um I'm not even sure that all Senate Democrats would be on board. Again, it's an open question whether or not Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema is going to be a friend to labor or not. I don't necessarily know. Uh, but I do know that the Republicans will likely filibuster this. All right. Um, and, and the reason they'll filibuster is because they don't give a damn about the workers. 
they represent the corporations. Uh, they despise working people. They think we're all idiots. Uh, they can't see that, and, and that they think that we can't see that the big corporations are the ones that are actually screwing us over. Uh, and to ensure that, Ryan actually points out that Republicans right now are talking about nothing but culture war stuff. Dr. Seuss, uh, uh, cancel culture, the uh, potato head. As if talking about any of those things will get you higher wages, paid vacation time, maternity leave, or safe working conditions. But again, what they have here is, is just a massive distraction that's all culture war rage bait stuff. And that's what this is. Uh, and they do that because they don't have any sort of policies that help regular people. Again, it is about the rich. It's about the donors. And also, the Republican Party is about nothing but upholding and continuing white supremacy. And that's what it is. Still, we've got to organize and we've got to get uh, Americans back into labor unions. It's the only way uh, I think that we're ever going to have any sort of movement for workers in this country. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf, or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.